Hey, it's Dom from Wakeford Digital. In today's video, we're going to explore some of the benefits of blogging for small businesses. Particularly in 2024, blogging can catch a bit of a bad rap. There's notions of how much time it takes, the effort you have to put in, and that the rewards are too distant in the future. Some business owners may think that blogging is just about stuffing keywords in an article or churning out content or that it's actually an outdated strategy. But here at Wakeford Digital, it's an integral part of our digital marketing strategies, particularly when we consider small businesses who may be new and entering a competitive field. So one of the latest articles on our website is an ultimate guide to blogging and we wanted to develop this video to sort of complement that. So what we'll cover is what is a blog? What are the benefits of blogging for small businesses in particular? Common misconceptions around blogging for small businesses as well as how to get started with a blog and then some personal tips which we've found along the way can help make your blogging experience exponentially better. So we're going to use the blog post as a bit of a backbone for this video and as I mentioned the first area that we want to cover which you know a lot of business owners might not actually know is what is a blog. So if we jump across to the Chow Tales website what we can sort of see is that a blog is a collection of articles on a website that are regularly updated and usually ordered in date order. So what we can see here are some of the latest blog posts from Matt and Trout Tales and they're covering a whole range of topics on everything from fly fishing in Tasmania to what you need to know about fly fishing in Tasmania, what gear you need, mid-season updates. So you can see there's a broad range of topics that are covered in the blog but pretty loosely they all center around one thing that's Matt's business, which is fly fishing and fly fishing tours in Tasmania. So a blog doesn't necessarily have to be massively written articles. It can be short updates. So for example, something new that we've done on the Wakeford Digital website recently is this work updates and news area. And whilst we do have a blog as well, um, we've found that these short little updates can really engage the community. So blogging can be a, a wide variety of formats, not necessarily just 5,000 word articles with images. I think before jumping into some of the misconceptions that business owners might have around blogging, it's also important to explore what some of the benefits are. So the ones that we've got listed here are things like improving SEO performance, fostering community engagement, boosting traffic to your website as well as link building and, and giving you more things to post about on social media. So when it comes to SEO, sort of the main idea or the main concept that we share with clients, particularly here at Wakeford Digital, is that if we think about a website, so let's use uh, Retreats Tasmania for an example. If we think about a website, what we're aiming to target here is say property management in Hobart. If we just had a one page website, then yes, we're getting this property management Hobart keyword in our main heading, which is fantastic. We're getting it up in our metadata as well, but there's sort of only one instance. When we talk about the term of something like topical authority, so becoming an, an authority or the trusted source on a topic, in this instance, property management in Hobart, if we've just got one page that speaks to that, yeah, that's okay, but it's, it's kind of only one line in the water. If we then double down on that through a strategy like service pages, now what we can start to talk about are property management services, property assessment services, etc., etc. Now what we can do is that's the first level is that property management, the second level is our services. The way that we view a blog is that sort of third level of content where what we can do is start to produce roundabout content so if we think about property assessment it can be you know what are the components of property assessment what's involved in property assessment how long does a property assessment take what are the benefits of property assessment so now what you can see is that instead of just getting one layer with regards to that keyword alone which is only one element with regards to seo you can see we're getting two three four ten opportunities all to speak to that same keyword. So that's the first sort of real benefit when it comes to SEO performance is not keyword stuffing, but naturally getting more opportunities to add keywords in. The second sort of part of that is when we look at these blog posts, you can also do things such as include internal links. So where we speak about photos or property management companies or Airbnb management in Tasmania, for example, what you'll notice is if we click this, it goes to our property management page. So we're creating internal links, which help tell search engines like Google that this page should rank higher for this sort of text. So that's where blogging can really benefit uh, SEO. When we start speaking about community engagement, if you're developing and sharing blog content, then sort of interlinked with the last part as well, that's social media content that you can share as well. And because blogs 
for the most part aren't about the selling, that's where your home page and your service page, which should also be informative, but yeah, should essentially sell your services, where the blogs like this one here, for example, are more so about giving back and, and actually empowering the community. So if you're providing helpful tips on how to take photos or what are the, the actual flies that you should be using this season, then that's content that you can share on social media or post on your YouTube or share with that community and they're more likely to engage with it because they can see, hey, this person actually wants to help my fly fishing journey or me taking photos of my Airbnb property as well. Boosting traffic to your website, sort of combining all of those elements together. If we're getting more articles out there and more social media, then we're obviously going to be getting some more social traffic. And then once we start to improve our SEO performance, that blog post might rank organically. Therefore, you're going to be found for a keyword that you might not previously be getting found for. And that's going to improve your SEO, but it's also going to boost the amount of people that are coming to your website. And obviously, if that traffic is relevant, which if your blog post topics are accurate or relevant to your business than it should be, then it's giving you more opportunity to actually have people inquire about those services. Link building, as I mentioned before, we have internal link opportunities, but blogging also opens up the opportunity for backlinks as well, which are really important. And a backlink in, in very general terms is when another website refers back to your website. And, and if that other website, so let's say it's the Retreat to Tasmania website speaking back to Wakeford Digital or vice versa. If one of those websites is, is a popular one or has quite a lot of authority, then it helps increase the SEO performance of say that, that lesser one because it's like, hey, this, this big reputable one is, is happy to link to this smaller one. Therefore, it, it's going to increase that versus your competitor as well. So they're the benefits when it comes to blogging, particularly for small businesses. And there's obviously more than that, but that sort of leads then into, okay, well, if we've got these benefits, what are the misconceptions? And, and having a blog is too time consuming is, is undoubtedly the one that comes up the most. And look, blogging, particularly you know, when we look at some of the other points that we're, that we're going to get to in terms of ensuring that your blog is, is really high quality, blogging does take time. There's no really quick way to do it. One of the tips that we've got later on is, is you know, the emergence of AI and how you can easily generate an AI blog post in a couple of seconds and, and don't do that. But yeah, blogging does take time, but there's some tips in, in this video and in the article which can really help in terms of planning and strategy and routine that can actually significantly reduce that time but still benefit from that blogging process as well. You certainly don't have to write a daily blog. Um, I think we say a bit later on as well that you know one blog a month that is really in-depth and really high quality can be just as beneficial as writing smaller spammy blog posts daily. So. Um, writing a blog post doesn't lead to actual business results. Much as we said before, look, yeah, if you write a blog and then put it up, you're not instantly going to get a million views. But over time, if you're getting relevant traffic to your website because they're engaging with that content, it does actually increase the opportunity for those people to also contact you or refer you on. It's not just about getting direct leads, which is obviously important, but fostering that community growth can't be overlooked. Only bigger businesses can benefit from blogging. We, we kind of find the opposite, that bigger businesses, whilst they sort of have a lot of online clout, it's it, blogging opens itself up as a real opportunity to, to actually start to chip away at, at those big players or, or businesses that already have an existing online presence. A key example of this is when we first started to take over with Matt and Trout Tales, the blog posts that we, we started to curate, they didn't directly target fly fishing Tasmania or fly fishing tours Tasmania. We targeted all those roundabout topics that, that you know the big guys didn't really care about in terms of the gear or providing seasonal updates or providing location information. And as we started to rank 10, 3, 2, 1 for those roundabout ones, we saw that our primary rank so for that keyword like fly fishing tours Tasmania actually increased drastically and I'm happy to sort of do a quick Google search for that now. So if we search this there you can see for that general fly fishing tour Tasmania trout tails is number one. It's in part because of that strategy as well because of that targeting the smaller keywords. So blogging can definitely benefit smaller businesses particularly those that are looking to make a mark in a, in a competitive space as well. We've sort of yeah, got into the, the SEO is too complex so we sort of come on board to really simplify simplify blogging and SEO and make sure we have a dedicated keyword for each article or that it links back to a specific landing page as well so it doesn't have to be complex and it doesn't have to be time consuming as well. So we've listed here some some 
pretty top level steps in terms of you might have seen the benefits you think right all right in 2024 we're already in may i am actually going to start a blog because i want to take my business to the next level online so the next question you've got is all right what do I have to do to get started? And this is where our graphic comes in. So we won't spend too much time going through this because it is all listed in the article, but the sort of five key steps that we've got are firstly, understand your audience. Now, we're guilty of this as well, where it can be so exciting to jump in and, uh, and write a blog post, but actually taking the time to understand the audience, whether that's your existing customers or those that you want as potential customers and knowing what they want and, and what they would look for in a blog post. So again, using Trout Tales as that example, whilst we did start to curate blog posts, we found that video format was really useful as well. So coupling the blogs with some short videos was fantastic because that audience, it's a very visual nature. So they're obviously gonna resonate with um, how-to guides or information that, that is sort of coupled with videos as well as text or dot points or really sort of simplified how-to step-by-steps. Whereas the audience of Awake for Digital here, small business owners, not-for-profits, sports clubs, etc. So understanding that audience and what they're actually gonna want from your blogging content is a really important first step. And a way that you can do this is just by coming up with some personas. So you know, who they are, where they hang out, what their age is, what what they do over a weekend, how they interact digitally online and what things they'd be searching for. And, and yeah, you can certainly sort of use those personas and, and then run each blog post back past the personas. The second step is keyword research and this sort of ties in as well. Whilst you, know, you shouldn't just be writing blog posts to target keywords and vice versa, you, know, you can use keyword research to help inform those topics. Because if you can write a blog post that is really high quality and offers a lot of value and might be coupled with something like a video, and that is for a keyword that you know that people are searching, let's say it's got 50 searches a month or 500 searches a month, then that's where you're gonna to start to see uh, increased website traffic and in turn additional leads or sales from your website as well. So there are a couple of free tools like Google Keyword Planner and Arefs that can help really refine that keyword search, that, that keyword process. But if you can identify that, hey, these keywords are actually have some search volume and then naturally incorporate those in your article, then that's definitely gonna hold you in good stead as well. And, and much the same is planning your blog content and whether that's on a, a piece of paper sort of thing or whether that's you know, written in a, in a sort of spreadsheet like you can see here that once you've sort of identified your audience, identified your keywords, and this isn't sexy and you haven't written an actual blog post yet, but coming back to some of those misconceptions, doing these three steps at the start is gonna make developing the blog content, which is the next step, so much easier. Therefore, having a bit of a plan, whether that's, you know, what, what is your one blog post a month, what keyword does it target, and what page can you link it back to on your website is really gonna help because when it comes to writing your next blog post, you don't have to go through this process again. You can simply open up your spreadsheet or pull out your piece of paper and say, this is what my next blog post is gonna be on, away we go. Now it's time to actually develop your content, which is excellent, the, the fun bit. And we often advocate for, say, three blog posts. If, you, if you're just starting out, that three to five sort of blog post mark is where we definitely look for. And you can get away with one, but it sort of helps to have three really different topics because again, there's three sort of more keyword opportunities or more topics that, that you can sort of cover. So understanding your audience, identifying what keyword or keywords you're gonna look at and having that plan means you can then jump into creating the content. And we'll get to it shortly with regards to the tips, but it's just sort of listed here that high quality content is, uh, is definitely something of importance. One of the biggest sleepers, and I think I'm gonna do a whole video just on this, that small businesses also overlook is promoting your content. So I said before that one well-written blog post a month can actually be just as beneficial as writing one small blog post a day sort of thing. There's neither right or wrong, but when it comes down to it, if you upload your blog and put it on your website, develop your blog, put it on your website, but then don't promote that blog, then unless it's gonna get found organically through search engines, then you've just spent all you know this time and effort and preparation, but not actually got it out there. So it's better to do one blog post and promote it well, rather than you know, writing millions of blog posts and not actually promoting them. And, and what do I mean by promoting? Put it on social media, send it to your colleagues. If you've got a mail list, then do that. 
post it in small business groups or in your local group you know that you feel might help but yeah actually getting that blog post out there in front of the people that are likely to read it is is a really overlooked step and and it is something that we definitely delve more with regards to in our tips but you can sort of see the example here it's been working with local business rock electrical to develop some blog posts but getting it out there on social media and in different formats as well is is really useful and even something like this where i've got a video that complements the blog post is again another way of actually getting that blog post out there so once you've started to develop those you know three five ten blog posts got them on your website it's really important to get them out there so i have also listed some tips which are hopefully really beneficial for those looking to start their blogging journey and as always if, if you're not sure about where to start or you want some help putting together that that content calendar or doing the keyword research or even getting your first three blog posts done that's something that wait for digital we can definitely help with as well or even taking a step back if you don't have a website that can facilitate a blog or that you might not be proud of yeah please feel free to get in touch because we can help sort of take that first step in getting a website up and running before starting your blogging journey as well but when it comes to tips, as I've already spoken about, developing a content calendar is, is almost the, the sleeping giant here. That And it, it can be quite routine as well, as I've sort of listed here, that you know every Monday morning or Sunday afternoon, that's the time that, that you write a blog. So whilst having that content calendar is a good first step, actually setting down some time to write the blog post and, and put that in your calendar, like schedule that as no different to a meeting, can definitely help doing that. So yeah, actually having a dedicated time to post is or to, to develop the content can definitely help make or break a blog. Choosing the right format is also really important. I've spoken a little bit in, in our written format with regards to search intent. So ensuring that the format of your blog post is appropriate, but also keeping it simple that you don't have to write 10,000 words. A, a well-written 1,000 word post that, that is answers the question quickly and effectively is going to be better than 10,000 words. So consider the format of your blog post. So if some if you're, you know, a chef and writing menus, then a written post like this isn't going to be useful. They're going to want to see a menu. So make sure that, you know, the format matches the search intent, but also keep it simple. Don't don't bite off more than you can choose. So answer the question and maybe that's it. Maybe for each blog post you write a question down, but yeah, answer the question and make sure that the blog post meets that intent as well. Another sort of tip is definitely get feedback. If that's from friends, family members, colleagues, getting feedback, people will pick up spelling mistakes, they'll pick up grammatical errors, but you know, particularly if, if it is a colleague and they're in that target market, then they're gonna come back and say, look, this is actually excellent, but tweak this, this, or I didn't quite understand what you were saying here. And, and again, that could be the difference between someone reading your full post, which is a really beneficial thing for SEO time spent on a website, or someone clicking straight off it as well. And as we sort of mentioned already, promote your blog posts, and not in a spam way, that's definitely not what we're, we're promoting, but I think, the, the bit here that I really like or that I want to really delve more into is using this blog post as an example. So there's you know four different posts. I know businesses often struggle with regards to what can I post on social media or what should I post coming up with things to post. So that's where in this example, if we were to use this blog post, what we can do is say, right, our first post this week is going to be an overall post just hey we're releasing a new blog it's about the ultimate guide to small businesses what it covers is benefits what is a blog tips and how to get started check it out at the post your website link here detailing misconceptions there's another post either later in that week or first thing the next week i don't have time for blogging blogging is too costly i don't see results from blogging hey did you know that you know these are actually misconceptions and this is why link to blog post an infographic talking about the benefits. We run through the benefits at the start. So do a little visual similar to this. I've actually got it up here now, which is fantastic. So yeah, do a, a sort of graphic like this that speaks to the benefits of blogging. Don't even have to copy and, and paste the article link in. Hopefully people will find that or copy and paste the link in. There's another opportunity for people to, to link to that. A post on how to get started with blogging, whether that's a post, whether that's a short video, much the same as this, I could share this video on how to actually get started with blogging. There's another post. So you can see from this one content piece, which may have taken an hour to write, I've now got at least one post, if not 
four posts a week on social media to do. Have a, a full fortnight on, hey, we're a small business. What we're going to do this week is focus on blogging for small businesses. There's three posts a week, which you can dissect this, just this blog post up, which you've already written. There's four, five different sections in this blog post. There's five separate posts. There's a video. There's another post. So using social media to promote your blog content and doing it in different ways to keep the engagement up and also highlight those different areas is a massive sleeper as well. And the last one that we've got here is that avoid over-reliance on, on Twitter tools like ChatGPT. So as I mentioned before, so easy now just to jump into ChatGPT and literally write write me a blog post on blogging. But search engines are going to know that it's AI written. Your readers are going to be like, hang on a sec, this is definitely not Dom that's written this article because it sounds like a robot. And then all of your blogging efforts are going to be undone. It's highly likely that you're going to get penalized and yeah, you're not going to get any engagement because no one's going to read it. So we definitely advocate for using ChatGPT as a, you know, if you if you want to, we use it. I'm happy to sort of say we, we use it, but more as a tool to help us write as opposed to the holy grail for writing. So we, we use ChatGPT to write this article, for example, but we gave it everything it needed to know the tips of mine like I actually sat down recorded what I wanted to say and then um, use that to convert that into the content that you're reading and watching now so don't rely on ChatGPT to be the silver bullet for blogging use it as the tool to help pick up grammatical errors or help reword certain ones or or take a section that you've written and revamp it in a way that might appeal a little bit more to small businesses or come up with a title that appeals a little bit more to that target market so yeah don't don't use ChatGPT as that that silver bullet so the last thing I sort of wanted to cover as a bit of a summary, those key tips are set aside a time to blog, come up with a content calendar, aim for three to five blogs to get started, keep things really simple and straightforward and don't use ChatGPT to write full blog posts and, and then definitely promote it on social media and get other people to read it as well. It's easy for me to sit here and talk about blogging and speak to the benefits, but I also wanted to quickly show you some proof is in the pudding with regards to a recent local business that, that we've been working with. You can see we sort of took over around January and following our, our digital marketing process with regards to a website redesign, but then coupled with SEO and a part of that is you can sort of see that our traffic, you know, we're not at a million views a month, but previously, you know, there wasn't much coming in at all. Whereas now what you can see is we've increased the traffic from one view a month essentially up until 36 views a month which is obviously an upward trend again i know it's certainly not a million views but we haven't also broken our back this is based on two blog posts and a website redevelopment so if we sort of continue that trend then we're you know certainly on the right trajectory as well and again this is two blog posts which didn't take long to write at all so it does sort of show that proof is in the pudding that a strategy of, of seo combined with blogging for small businesses can make a big difference as well if you wanted to see some more examples of blog posts and what works then we do have our own sort of web design seo digital marketing videography blog just going through a bit of a, updating our branding to the new rebrand at the moment as well but have a read as you're reading blogs as well make note of the ones that you like the look and feel of and then can obviously use that to inform your own blog writing process so i wanted to reiterate again that whilst blogging it's not a, an easy thing and it's not a, an instant silver bullet as i mentioned it is something that with time and with a really good process can actually be the game changer for small businesses and we've seen that and continue to see that as we work with local businesses through blogging as a part of their seo or digital marketing strategy to grow their businesses online so if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us and yeah, whether that's on Instagram, through our website, Facebook, on the YouTube video and yeah, if you've got any questions with regards to blogging, what does a good blog look like, yeah, how else can I get started on blogging or want some assistance at all, please feel free to reach out and get in touch. Thanks for watching.